Sky Horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll see you. out of here, near Redstone, his name Greenfield. That's right. You see, Silas Greenfield is my dad. He, he is your father. But why, then, are you working at the bar M as a car well, Since you and I are such good friends, Carlos, I'll tell you about that. A little more than two months ago, I, I got to sort of a fracas at the cafe in Redstone. I reckon up to then I was sort of, well, the kind that was always getting into one scrape or another. Yeah, perhaps. But you have changed my oh, Thanks to you, Carlos. Anyway, to get back to my story. When I got to the ranch house that night, Dad was waiting for me, and he was plenty riled. By thunder, Jim, it's about time you got home. I'm waiting to talk to you. Sit down. All right, Dad. I, I reckon you heard about the little trouble I had in town, huh? I heard about it all right. I told you before, if you had any more trouble and didn't buckle down and work like a man, I'd do something about it. Why, well, I don't say it. You're packing up and leaving here in the morning. What? If you can go someplace, get a ranch job and hold it for at least two months, you can come back here. If you can't do that, so help me. Everything I have will go to your cousin, Jake Allen. He has only a small ranch up near Milton. But by Jiminy, he seems to make a good living at it. Jay Callum wants to get his hands on this spread. I never liked him, and I didn't think you did, Dad. That has nothing to do with it. I'm giving you one more chance. But not here. 
Now, you do like I said. Go get a job and hold it for at least two months and bring me a letter from some rancher proving you did a good job. That's all I have to say, Jim. You heard my terms. Now, it's up to you to do something about it. That's all. Good night and goodbye. So your father sent you away to get a job, huh? Yeah. In a couple of weeks, my two months will be up. Then I'll get a letter from the boss and head for home. And you'll come with me, Carlos. Well, let's get a move on. We're wasting time. See. Come on, get it. The following morning, Jim's cousin, Jake Allen, was eating breakfast with his right-hand man, Bushy. Well, Jake, things are going mighty poorly here at the ranch. If it wasn't for certain operations we carry out with the men, <laughs> that uncle of yours wouldn't think you were doing so well. I uh, know. We'll have to pull another robbery soon. Our cash is getting kind of low. <laughs> but someday I'll own the Circle G. And maybe sooner than Uncle Si realizes. He told me that he's changing his will in my favor in a couple of weeks. And then anything can happen. Maybe you're counting your chickens too soon, Jake. Hmm? What do you mean? Well, I was aiming to tell you. I rode into Milton last night. I saw Jim Greenfield in the cafe. Seems he's working at the Bar M spread under the name of Jim Green. And he has only two more weeks to go. Then his old man will take him back. Yeah, and that means I'm out in the cold. Yeah. Tell me what you found out, Bushy. Well, your cousin has a partner, a Mexican. They were assigned to ride the West Range over there from midnight to seven. The Mexican's name's Carlos. Oh. Jim got into trouble, he'd be out for good. What are you thinking about? Tell me. Did you get a good look at the Mexican? Yeah, he has a stocky build, slick black hair. Sort of nice looking, hombre. Mm-hmm. And Jim is sort of slim, built like you. That's right. I got an idea floating around in my mind, Bushy. If I knew a Mexican who could pass for that Carlos, you know, with a bandana to cover his face. No, oh, I don't know a Mexican, but I have a friend in Milton who's something like Carlos... And he's mighty good at faking a Spanish accent. Well, by golly, that'll do it. I'll tell you the plan I have in mind. That same evening, Toto, Indian companion to the Lone Ranger, went to Milton for supplies. He returned to the camp they shared in the nearby hills. Oh, Scott. Oh, fella. Easy, Scott. Easy, fella. You made good time, Toto. Uh, it's not part of town. Moon, plenty bright. Hear anything that might lead to the outlaws that have been operating in this territory? No. But me hear two men talk at hitch rack, and me think them plan trouble. Oh, go on. But me put supplies in saddlebags. Me kneel down to take stone from Scout's hope. And two men come from cafe to get horses. Them not notice me. Well? Well, them talk while them get ready to mount. Me hear them plenty plain. Easy there. Ready to hit letters here? Yeah. What does your boss want to talk to me about? Did he tell you? He thinks you can help on a job because of the way you can fake a Mexican accent. No. You're uh, built like somebody he wants to put something over on. Yeah, sounds like risky business. <laughs> You've taken plenty of risk before, and so have we. Remember, you'll get plenty of cash for him, so why worry? Let's go. Uh, is what? <coughs> yeah, yeah, come on. Ranger decided to trail the men and find out what they planned. A masked man and Indian found the tracks left by Bushy and Sid and followed them. Later that night, they stopped at the entrance to Jake Allen's small ranch. Oh, oh, down. Down. Oh, oh, I'm turning here. Yeah, the place is lighted. We'll approach it on foot and try to find out more about those two men. Easy, to the big fellow. Easy, brother. Leave Silver and Scout here among the trees. Ah. Uh-huh. Minutes later, the masked man and the Indian stopped on the edge of the clearing near the house. I'll approach the window on one side. You go to the one on the other side, Tom. Uh-huh. All right, let's go. The two men separated, moving cautiously toward each side of the ranch house. The Lone Ranger reached the window, then carefully looked inside. At that moment... Reach, mister. I got a gun at your back. Reach and be quiet. All right. I was coming from the barn, and I saw you sneak to this window. I saw your partner, too. I'll take your guns and get the drop on him. The man behind the Lone Ranger reached out to pull the guns from the masked man's holsters. With a lightning-like move, the Lone Ranger suddenly kicked back. 
Then dropped his hand, grabbing the crook's gun arm and twisting it. That gun. Go ahead. Oh, my God. You make too much noise. Oh. What happened, Kim Masabi? This man surprised me. Pick up his gun. We'll have to leave quickly. Men to come from Bunkhouse. Yes, we will. Great moonlight. Hey, no, 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 no. The Lone Ranger and Tonto soon outdistanced the cowboys who had lost time getting their mounts at the corral. Later, after covering their trail, a masked man and Indian reached their camp without mishap. It's too bad we didn't get a chance to find out more about the men in the ranch house, Tonto. Ah. That place will be closely watched from now on. We'll watch tomorrow in case those two were planning trouble. Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. When Bill's up at the kids off shout, you can't strike that slugger out. He gets so hit because he knows he's got the power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got no power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios. The cereal shaped like little letter O's. And those O's stand for oats. The good grain Cheerios is made from. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, those good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. You can see that Cheerios is made to give you real good power. So make sure you have a Cheerios breakfast every day. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. At Jake Allen's ranch house, Jake was conferring with Bushy and Sid. What's your plan, Jake? Well, Jim Greenfield and his sidekick, the Mexican, ride the range every night. Now, you, Sid, and Bushy, wearing bandanas over your faces, will pull that job I mentioned about dawn. Bushy's gym size, you're stocky like the Mexican. In other words, we're supposed to be them, huh? That's right. And to make sure that people think so, be sure to mention their names as if you got excited and forgot to be careful. You know, you call Bushy Jim, have him call you Carlos. I get it. And be sure to cover your tracks and come back here. I'll ride over to Milk so as to be there when things begin to pop. Yeah, and we ought to get plenty of cash out of that job, Jake. Don't worry, the loot will be split three ways. If things go bad, Jim Greenfield will be done for, and I'll wind up owning the Circle G spread. The following morning, Bushy and Sid waited behind some large boulders a few miles from Milton. I hear the stage coming now. Get your bandana over your face so we won't be recognized. All right. <laughs> Don't forget to call me Jim, and I'll mention the name Carlos. Let's go. I'm ready. Come on, and start shooting. Get, get it. Come on. Come on. Get it. Like the guard took a bullet. Yeah, too bad. Throw down the cash box, mister. Sure, sure. Hold your fire, mister. You already killed the guard. Carlos, keep him covered while I keep an eye on passengers. Of course, Jim. Do not worry. I shall watch the driver close. The elderly couple inside the coach aren't going to interfere. They don't carry any valuables. No use wasting any time with them, then. Hurry with that cash box. Here, here. Here it comes. Good. Now get that stage out of here and be quick about it. Sure, sure. Get up there. Get up. Come on, Sid. We'll bust the lock off that box with forts, grab the contents, and then beat it for Jake's place. Later, the stage arrived in Milton and caused great excitement. The sheriff, noticing the curious crowd at the stage stop, hurriedly left his office and pushed his way through the onlookers. Hey, what's the matter here? Let me 
me, too. The bank was held up sheriff. Two masked galoots came out of hiding, thrown dead. The guard stopped the bullet so he knew what was happening. He took the cash box. I'll have a look at the guard. Somebody get the doctor and hurry. Too late for a doctor, sheriff. He's dead. What's what happened here? Oh, howdy, Mr. Allen. A couple of masked outlaws held up the stage a while ago and killed the guard. Oh, by golly, that's murder. Get a good look at the killer's driver? Yeah. How about that driver? Well, one was slim. The other stocky and spoke like a Mexican. They were riding a bronc and a pinto. The hold up happened at Big Boulder's Hollow, a few miles west of town. The two old people who were passengers were inside the stage station. They'll agree with what I told you about the crooks. I'll question them. Was there anything else that might help to recognize them, driver? Well, uh, come to think of it, one of them mentioned the name Jim. The other mentioned Carlos. Jim was a slim fella. Carlos a Mexican. Ah, a slim fella named Jim. Stocky Mexican called Carlos. Uh, I don't recall. Wait a minute. What? There are a couple of cowhands at the bar I am. Slim Green and his partner Carlos Lopez. And come to think of it, they ride a bark and a pinto. I'll take a posse and go get them right now. Toto, who had been in town and had seen and heard everything that happened, pulled to a stop at the camp where the Lone Ranger was waiting. Toto told what had taken place. Then the two men went to trail the outlaws. Meanwhile, in spite of their declarations of innocence, Jim and Carlos were taken from the Bar M Ranch by the sheriff and posse and brought to the jail at Milton. As the time passed, the discussions at the cafe about the killing and robbery became more heated. Jake Allen did his best to keep the subject alive. Well, I'd see to it that those two got what was coming to them. Look, for instance, you could get him out of jail, give him a chance to run. Then shoot him down for trying to escape. Oh, Jonah, Mr. Allen's got the right idea. Why do we put up with this? Let's settle with them two murdering waddies right now. All right, let's go get them. We'll give them light like they gave to the guard. The sheriff and the deputy were in his office when the door suddenly opened, and ten silent but sullen-faced men entered with drawn guns. Say, watch this. You and the deputy are covered, sheriff. We come to get those two killers, and we mean business. If you men are aiming to hang those prisoners... We don't aim to hang them, Sheriff. We figure they ought to have a chance to escape. Right, men? Mr. Allen, I'm surprised to see you with a mob like this. I warn you, if you and these men take the law into your own hands, I... Look me over, Sheriff. I'm not carrying a gun, nor a rope, for that matter. (laughs) You got the Sheriff and Deputy covered, men. You, you get the keys and bring out those two fighters. Right now. A few minutes later, Jim and Carlos were brought into the front office from the cell. Here they are, men. Cousin Jake, what are you doing here? Well, I happened to be in town and heard what you did. Of course, I didn't know one of the killers was you. We didn't kill anybody. I'll hold up the stage. The sheriff says they got the goods on you. I didn't say that yet. It's just that Shut I... up, sheriff. We'll do the talking. Well, Uncle Silas sure will be sorry to hear about this, Jim. What's all this? That young fellow, your cousin? From the way you've been talking and acting, I'd say... Keep to... quiet, Sheriff. I didn't know it was Jim at the time. Now I reckon it's too late to do anything. All right, you two owl hoots. We'll give you a chance. Your horses have been brought around to the front, and you're free to go. No, wait. These local men will be shooting at you through the door and the window. Shut up, Sheriff. Get moving, both of you. Go on, make a run for it. Oh, no, no, wait, wait. I'm making a mistake. We are not the ones who did the shooting. That sure sounds like the Mexican voice I heard when they held up the stage. Go on, start running out that door. Get going. Hold it. They're not going any place. A masked man in the doorway holding guns. But look, an engine come in through the back way. They got us covered. Well, do something. Well, get him. Hold it. Grab your gun, deputy. Thanks to the masked man, we've turned the tables. All of you, drop your guns. All right. Why do you take a chance when a masked man who likely came to help the killers appears? I think you know as well as I do those two men aren't the killers. The men the sheriff wants are outside, tied to their horses. Uh, Jim, I'm sure glad to hear this. I'll ride to the Circle G and tell your father. I'm not riding any place, Alan. The two men we captured at your ranch house have involved you as leader of a gang we've been hunting. What? Also, you planned that hole up to get Jim Greenfield into trouble. I don't know who you are or how you found out about this, but we sure thank you. The two men we captured gave us all the facts. They hoped to save their own necks by giving evidence against Allen and the others of the gang. Why, the dirty coyotes. These will hold you, Allen, until I verify what the masked man has said. Jim's father gave him two months to make good as a ranch hand or lose his inheritance to his cousin, Jake Allen. Jim is making good. And the two months will soon be up. 
Jake knew this and planned to get Jim into real trouble. So that's what it's all about. Jim, this next man, he's a good friend, no? He sure is. Though I never saw him before. Your father will be glad to hear about you, Jim. I'm sure he'll be waiting for you when you finish making good and go back to the Circle G. Oh, thanks, mister. Carlos and I will be the two hardest working waddies on the spread. One of Alan's men is here with him. We were given a description of him. He's the man whom I was forced to wound, Sheriff. I had nothing to do with the killing. The court will decide that. As for the rescue men, you better sneak on home and think over the fact that I could run you in for what you tried to do. But I'm sure Jake Allen was behind it all. Three more of Allen's men will be at his bunkhouse at sundown, Sheriff. It'll be a simple matter to go there and pick them up. Otto and I will meet you later and go with you. Until then, adios. 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 Uh, that masked man is a real hombre, eh, Jim? But for him and the India, we would not be here now. Yeah, he's a real friend, seems like. Uh, just, who is he, Sheriff? Yeah. You know? Sure I know. He's an hombre who can't stand polecats like your cousin, Jake Allen. And does all he can to bring law and order to the West. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. Well, oh, no. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Champions are made, not born. There's an adage that's ever so true. For instance, Sam and Sammy Sneed, a golfer as good as they come. Young Sam learned golf the only way. He practiced hours every day, chipping them short, driving them long. And soon he learned what keeps champs strong. Wheaties with milk, you can't go wrong. Today, Sam rates the gallery's cheers. A Wheaties eater, 17 years. Right. Sammy Sneed is a Wheaties eater from way back. Plenty of nourishment in Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Okay, Sammy, drive that ball. What? Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way, he's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made not for. Yes, sir. Get on your way, get on your way, get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.